Are you, by any chance, interested in the history of beer? Then lay down, get comfortable, and gently close your eyes. I offer you an escape from this modern lockdown world. Join me in a brown pub with wooden stairs, chairs, and pairs of fair people. There's a smell in the air. It's not nice, but it's familiar, and you've missed that smell so much. Picture of this. A chubby guy with a thick and full brown beard. He's wearing a black turtleneck sweater with one brown-colored horizontal stripe. He's sitting in a pub, a dark pub. He's a bit sweaty, even though it's cold outside. Probably because he's chubby and not because of the non-existent medical issue he keeps mentioning. And he has these big, hairy hands. His thumbs are as big as a baby arm. And he slams his right hand on the table. He says, right after sipping on a craft beer with a very high percentage of alcohol, probably called Dragonborn's Brew or something, and he says, hey, let me tell you about the history of beer. I'm somewhat of a beer connoisseur, so lend me your ears. And you didn't invite this guy, you know? You just arrived at the pub, you're waiting on a date, you don't know the guy. You check your phone and see a text. Your date's gonna be late. Half an hour tops, they say. Well, we'll see. Kind of reluctantly, you agree, and the man, let's call him David, that's a beer guy name, right? David, big old Dave, Davy boy, Dave, suave Davi, David, 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 Leonardo da Vinci, jolly old Dave. His big Santa cheeks turn a bit red, and he takes the stage. Two other people you don't know have joined a table, and everyone is listening to Dave the beer guy. Did you know that over 50 billion gallons of beer are consumed around the world by humans every single year? He added by humans because deer don't drink beer. It's the most widely consumed alcoholic drink on the planet. And Dave still thinks he's so unique. Most beer is brewed from grains such as malted barley, but wheat, maize, or rice are also used around the world to create this heavenly drink. Simply put, the fermentation process makes ethanol and carbonation from the sugars inside these cereal grains. It's also one of the oldest drinks humans have produced. The oldest chemical trails of beer were found in Iran and date back to more than 7,000 years ago. There is, however, also evidence in Chinese old artifacts that suggests the old cultures there brewed beers with grapes and honey or rice as early as 9,000 years ago. The fermentation process makes use of wild yeast in the air. Therefore, it is possible different cultures develop beer independently from each other. The first ones probably discovered it by accident when refusing to throw away some spoiled ingredients. A cocky dude called Jesus. Everyone starts shaking their heads. David, please stick to the story. David sighs and he says, all right, all right. I had a whole bit about Jesus prepared, but if you guys don't want to hear it. Now, David asks if anyone in the room writes poetry. About four people have joined and one of the new people says they do. And David looks him straight in the eye and says, my guy, you know that the first recipe for beer was kept alive in the form of a 3,900 year old poem honoring the patron goddess of brewing. Just imagine, some guys reciting beer poems to each other at work when brewing. Now, some say that the development of beer and bread is one of the main factors of the rapid cultural development that followed. The old methods of brewing beer had some byproducts, and one of them was called beer stone, a kind of residue coating on the vessels that contained the beer. That's the stuff people found in Iran on fragments of such jokes. These thousands of years ago, most beer was produced domestically, and David says, a lot of beer fans are going back to the roots of beer brewing. Therefore, craft beer is one of the oldest surviving products of mankind. It's literally older than Jesus. Dave, 
Please stop mentioning Jesus. Man, we thought this was a PC history lesson. Okay, okay. Dave sighs a lot. He's a bit out of breath. But he still loves beer, though. Where was I? Right. Domestic beers. Well, the beers before the Industrial Revolution always continued to be produced and sold. Even when European monasteries started producing and selling beer in the 7th century. Only when the artisanal manufacturing process turned into industrial manufacturing, the cultural significance of domestically produced beer dropped. Gradually, the process of brewing evolved with us, and when thermometers and hydrometers were invented, the control of the brewing process grew so that the results of a brewing session were much easier to predict. The produce gained quality and purity, but lost a bit of its spirit. People shook their heads. One girl burst out laughing. Dave did the finger guns towards her, and everyone else felt a bit uncomfortable. The girl loved it, though. I think they're going home together tonight. They were drinking beer with their arms around each other at this rate. And Dave concludes the first part of his story by saying that the brewing industry is a global business with thousands of brands and hundreds of actual wildly known brands producing the angel pea we enjoy every weekend. Beer became so vital to the ancient populations because the beer-making process was used to purify water and create a safe source of hydration. The grain-growing populations of Eurasia and North Africa relied on it so heavily that in 1868 a certain James Death put forward a theory in the beer of the Bible that the manna from heaven that God gave the Israelites was a bread-based porridge-like beer called Wusa. Wusa Wusa was good, David said. People shook their heads. The girl laughed and twirled around her hair. She was on fire. I mean, not literally. Of course, not literally. But David got her really, really um, in the right place. Now, the beers were often thick. More of a gruel than a drink. A bit like badly mixed pea soup or something. And the Sumerians used straws to avoid the bitter solids produced by the fermentation process. As we'd all expect, the popularity of beer went down a bit in ancient Rome and was replaced by wine. The Romans called it cerevisia, derived from the Celtic word, or the Celtic word, which is probably why you can order cervezas in a Spanish-speaking country. Ancient Nubians even used beer as an antibiotic medicine, and women, listen closely now, the clay tablets left over from ancient Mesopotamia indicate that the majority of the brewers were women, and that it was a well-respected occupation at the time. It was the only profession to gain divine protection from female deities or goddesses. There was Ninkasi, who allegedly discovered the production of beer. There was Ceres, whose name was used in a metonymic way to refer to beer. That's when you use the name of something else to refer to something. Like when Dave said, lend me your ears. He didn't want us to literally lend us his ears. He wanted us to listen. And finally, Sidure, who covered the enjoyment of beer. In ancient Babylonia, brewers were women as well but also priestesses, and some of the beer they brewed was strictly intended for religious ceremonies. The ancient pharaohs drank beer daily, and during the building of the great pyramids of Giza, each worker got a daily ration of four to five liters of beer, which served as both nutrition and refreshment. In many ways, beer, therefore, contributed to these amazing monuments. In the Middle Ages, in Europe, brewers' guilds often had patron saints of brewing. Arnulf of Metz and Arnulf of Audenburg were recognized by some French and Flemish brewers. Even Belgian brewers recognized Arnulf of Audenburg as the patron saint of hop pickers. Charlemagne even considered beer to be an important part of living, and people say he trained brewers himself. During the medieval period in Europe, beer had turned into one of the most common drinks once again. All social classes consumed it daily, but the idea that it was more common than water was a myth. Water was rather accessible in those days, and most towns were built close to the natural sources of fresh water. Water was still cheaper than beer, but boy, did these guys drink beer.
Because the rest of the info on Wikipedia was a bit boring, David said. He had skipped to the mythology part. Here are some fun mythology facts about beer. The Finnish epic Kalevala, collected in written form in the 19th century, but based on oral traditions many centuries old, devoted more lines to the origin of beer and brewing than it does to the origin of mankind. The mythical Flemish king Gambrinus from Jan Primus, John I, is sometimes credited with the invention of beer. A lot of pubs in Belgium are also called the Cambrinus. According to the Czech legend, deity Radagast, god of hospitality, invented beer. In Egyptian mythology, the immense bloodlust of the fierce lioness goddess Sekhmet was only sated after she was tricked into consuming an extremely large amount of red-colored beer, believing it to be blood. She became so drunk that she gave up slaughter altogether and became docile. In Norse mythology, the sea god Aegir, his wife Ran, and their nine daughters brewed ale or made for the gods. In Locasena, it is told that Aegir would host a party where all the gods would drink the beer he'd brewed for them. He made this in a giant kettle that Thor had brought. The cups in Aegir's hall were always full, magically refilling themselves when emptied. Aegir had two servants in his hall to assist him. Eldir, the fire kindler, and Femafeng, the handyman. In Nart, Sagas, Satanaya, the mother of Nartz, a fertility figure and matriarch, invented beer. Recent Irish mythology attributes the invention of beer to the fabled Irishman Charlie Mops. And then finally, the word beer comes from old Germanic languages. There is the Dutch word beer, the French word bier, the Romanian bere, and the Turkish word bira. The Nordic languages went on a different route and called it ölül, resulting in the English word ale. And as mentioned before, the Spanish Latin speaking ancestors called it cervicia. And now, cerveza. This concludes my Dave talk, David jokingly said referring to TED Talks, and the girl, her name was Sarah, went completely wild. She was practically drunk on laughter, and beer, probably. Her red glasses turned into beer goggles, and she went over to David. The people who had gathered thanked David and went their separate ways. Jesus, he knows me by Genesis, is now gently exiting the speakers. The bartender is cleaning a recently returned empty glass of beer. David greets you by lifting his hat. He and Sarah leave the pub together. You're alone again now. Didn't you forget something? Oh, all right. You had a date. You check your phone, and as it turns out, your date has just arrived and is waiting outside. You greet them, and you say, I just had the craziest thirty minutes. Are you, by any chance, interested in the history of beer?